What's good, everybody? You can see the breath coming out my mouth today. It's a brisk 41 degrees out here on my porch in Nashville. Behind me is the cross. Baby Jesus is always with me. He's with you, too. Just trying to get some fresh air before we tackle this mix today. If you're ready, let's get at it. Here we go. And here we are inside getting ready to tackle this mix. Before we get started, I want to say what's up, everybody. Happy holidays from me to you. My name is Paul the Fifth, Fifth, and I run Legacy Studios Nash right here in Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. I welcome you to subscribe. Let's grow this thing together, especially if you're interested in all things media and music production. Now for this song, let me give you a little bit of history about me and the artist. I was adopted from Mumbai, India, and I grew up in a small town called Evansville, Indiana. It's right on the Indiana-Kentucky border and involved in music my whole life there. When I was in college from 2004 to 2006, I worked at a radio station as a conglomerate. The one I was working with at the time was a rock station called 103 GBF, the River City Rocker, where I got my name of Paul the Fifth from my promotions manager, Bobby G. You're still my hero, Bobby. And I happened to meet this artist. His name's Larry Defendall, and the lead singer of the band is Jimmy the Talent. In my final weeks at SAE, I decided to give them a call and I said, hey man, if you have any music that you want to record, now's the time to do it. It's completely free. It'll just cost you some gas to come from Evansville to Nashville and a little bit of your time. So we recorded this song. It's called Blue Collar Anthem. And we recorded it in Studio B, which was a 32 input Toft analog console. I've gone ahead, organized things a little bit. We'll play this and we'll mix this thing together. I'll take you through it step by step and take it from here to here. If you're ready, let's go. Here is the OG session. It was recorded exactly four years ago today on December the 9th of 2017, last saved at 9.06 p.m. A pretty basic one, but I wanna show you what it consists of. And before I get to that, look at all this craziness. I've got two USB-C hubs here. I've got this one with one external hard drive in, another one over there, and this one has my eye lock. Craziness. This 2020 M1 MacBook Pro has been great. Storage is good, still running fast, but port selection is pretty much thinking about upgrading to a newer one. My goal in moving everything from the studio to home is to save money. However, tomorrow is my birthday and I made a pretty big purchase. Something that involves the number 16 and that I can put all these fingers on to make multiple big moves all at once. You have to stick around and check that out tomorrow. So here's the session. Let me show you what it's comprised of. We've got drums, kick in, kick out, snare top, bottom tom, one, two, three. We have an SM58, which was placed above the drummer, and we use it for kind of like a crush, added a little distortion to give it some grit and flavor. Then we've got our overhead left, overhead right, room right, room left. We've got a hi-hat. A drum bust. We've got our bass guitar holding down the low end. We have two tie lines and an acoustic guitar. Those were all acoustic guitar channels. And then we have the lead vocal for this song. Let's make this a little bit bigger and we shall play this. Just to let you know, this is kind of a not really bluegrass, but kind of a lighter rock type song. And uh, they're a little off with the click, so I'll probably take that off and not quantize or beat detective the drums or anything but here it is we can already tell that levels aren't good we got to get the vocal standing up forefront and everything right yeah, everything's all a wash. Vocals aren't up front, drums are too loud, acoustics way too loud.
Whoa, that bass and frequency was in the acoustic. See, we're getting off the click there. Cool, so you get the idea. Let's go to our other screen. I've got everything all at Unity already. I've got my like instruments together, the drums, drum bus, bass, bus, then the tie lines, which is the acoustics, and then the acoustic guitar, vocals, and then the vocal bus. Flipping a little bit there. So let's do this. I don't need to put any trim on anything because everything was recorded pretty well for the most part. We'll just go through and adjust levels. Let's do that now. Nice, hot, delicious coffee from Colombia. This has got some hints of chocolate and caramel in there, and it is so, so yummy, making me feel good after dealing with allergies. Good on the stomach, heart, and soul. Now let's explore this mix real quick. I hope that you and your families are staying incredibly healthy and having a great holiday season together. Real quick, again on this mix, it had drums, bass guitar, acoustics, and vocals. So pretty simple mix, but my goal is to make everything a little more well-rounded, get the vocals to sit up front, get a good kick drum and bass guitar relationship, and just have everything sounding good. So I used some Pro Q3 and some analog plugins to give us some of the analog flavor and richness. Let's take a look at these guitars. The first one that comes in here is this. Sounds like this. How do we get there? Pro Q3 rolled off all this low end, did a little boost down here on the low end, and then we took the mid range out, up here a couple boosts for some sparkle and shine, and get that percussiveness of that pick, the John John John, to really help add drive that rhythm when the chorus section comes in. So this was the DI, and then this one here was actually recorded on like the 12th fret. So basically, same exact EQ. Let me go back to the other screen here. And then what I did was, I took those and just panned them out to give more of a wider image. Cool. And then like I said, I took this one out completely. And then right here on our acoustic guitar bus, added the Pro Q3 again. However, we rolled a little more off. This boost on the bass wasn't as much. Still pulled out some mid-range. And then this for the sparkle and shine and the percussiveness on that pick. To make things a little more smooth out, what we did was the virtual tape machine. 1.5 ips, bypassed, engaged. As a little pop and crack in there like the analog tape would do on an old school analog console, let's take a look at our next instrument that comes in, the bass guitar, holding things down making this bigger. If you remember in the beginning, this was clipped to all hell. I had to pull that down negative 5.6 dB. And just because I'm wearing glasses doesn't mean that my eyesight is fully restored. I still have issues seeing. So we did some clip gain on this and on our EQ did a Pro Q3. Let's listen to this here. Rolled off this nastiness boosted our fundamental. There are some weird frequencies right here that I just didn't like. This is unique, boosted a little bit of that mid-range a little bit. Pretty big cut here, about 37. And then right here, a little, little boost for some sparkle shine and a little bit of attack. Bypass. You can notice that. Much tighter, a little more controlled, much more controlled. Definitely got some compression on there. You can see that working. Let's take a look at that. What did I use here? I used the SSL EV2. And uh, basically just kind of 
kept things flat, but made a big difference on things here. Cool, so we've explored the acoustic guitars, the bass. Now let's talk about these drums. Four years ago, I really didn't have a real good grasp and concept on recording in general, let alone drums, which are a very dynamic instrument where the volume can go all over the place. So I felt like a lot needed to be done on these drums. Let's see what we did here. Let's mute everything else. Gonna make this a little bit bigger for my old eyes. Right down here, we just get that plus, and there we go. So this had two kick drums on it. We had a kick in, and then we had a kick out. So let's explore this kick in. Let's see what we use on this. Let's go to comments. I had used an Electro Voice RE20. So that is a cylindrical looking mic. It's used in broadcast a lot. Really captures a lot of low and deep ends. Let's uh, listen to this kick drum. So my go-to Pro Q3, roll that out. Pretty heavy booster at about 51. Pull this low end out. Weird frequency right there, but right here at about 75 or 7.5K, did a boost for that uh, click, for that pop and attack of the beater hitting the head. Bypass. You can hear a lot of other instruments in there. It just sounds a little reverby. A lot tighter, punchier, kickier, <laughs> if you will. Here's the gate. Pull that up a little bit. Okay, and then we have our kick out, capturing the outside of the kick drum. And that was using a Yamaha sub kick. Let's listen to this. So on this, we took all that high end, totally rolled it out. And then right here, our fundamentals at 60 hertz. And then I did a little crazy boost here, but you probably can't even notice it, but I just thought, what the hell? Blending the two together, we got a nice sounding kick drum. Moving along to our snare top here. Whoa, we got some bark and bite and some aggressiveness on this. What did we do to get achieve that? The SSL EV2. I really wanted the snares to stick out and it did. I boosted some things at right here about 6K. Woo! And then let's see, our snare bottom. Total opposite. What do we got here? Pro Q3 rolled everything off to a lot of the mid-range, and we boosted this here at about 256 hertz. Pulled that right out, pulled this out here, and then boosted some top in. Bypassed, it's just verby, not tight, just blah. Tighter, attack, punchy, just four moves. Roll that off, boosted, cut, boosted and then I put a gate on here because I just wanted to capture that snare bottom bypass you can hear all the other instruments in there out yeah the magic of a gate on our toms we didn't really have a whole lot on the first tom here let's just listen to this Roll this out. Here's our fundamental at 126 hertz. Pull this mid range out. There was a nasty just ring right there. I didn't like it. But here's another boost. Notice that just sounds like thud. A lot more controlled, a lot more defined. There's not much in the way of the Tom 2 down here. I think there was only one hit at the very end, like two. Yeah, here it is. Lower fundamental, roll all that out. Pull this mid-range out. Again, that nasty ring and hiss. And then here about 7.3K, a little boost. Cool. So this next track is interesting. This is the SM58 that was placed behind the drummer's head. It's kind of like a crush or a distortion. Let's take a look. Here's our EQ. A lot more high end in there because it's above his head, capturing those cymbals. Roll that low end off, a little boost for the bass, mid range out, the boost right here, 
8.9K, pretty high. And then what we did here was I found this distortion, found this black op distortion, put the distortion down here about three fourths of the way, cut a lot out and the volumes like right over here too. Didn't want it to be too much, but once you blend it in, it gives the drums a really cool effect. Hi-hat, pretty simple and basic. All I did was take all that low in information. All I did was take this low end information out, high shelf, just to capture that high end information of the hi-hat. Then we've got our overheads here. Overhead left, right, room left, and room right. EQ is gonna be exactly the same because they're capturing all the same information. And here's what it looks like. Roll things off here, a little boost for the bass drum, mid range out boost to accentuate those symbols. Again, 8.9K. But here's something I did interesting when it came to the panning. On these two here, these are the overheads. I panned them more in, okay? And then the rooms, which are a room mic capturing the entire kit, I panned those out. Actually, they're going down here about 83. So you're getting more of a wide spread on things. So here's what everything sounds like. So you're getting a wide space on those drums. Let's command S out because I don't want anything to happen. Because the last four times I tried to film this, my computer crashed and some bad things happened. Okay, so we've covered pretty much everything. We've covered drums, bass guitar, electric guitars. Now let's talk about Jimmy's vocal. This was recorded with an SM58. So here's Jimmy's vocal. Lama. By figure thousand there, miss the middle class. Really didn't do much. It was recorded pretty well. There wasn't much in the background, didn't EQ a whole lot. Just threw an SSL 9000J on here. Pretty just basic raw settings. Just wanted to capture that analog flavor. Now, one thing I did do was add a Greg Wells voice centric plugin. Boosted his gain here a little bit. We've got some verb on it. it sounds like this. Lama. By figure thousand there, miss the middle class by just the hair. So that's what I did on all these instruments. The drums, bass guitar, acoustic guitar, and there's his vocal. So now let's take a look at the master fader. Real quick, one thing you can do on these, you can actually kind of read your waveforms. You can see that it's the intro, things are building, it's going a little quieter here for like a verse, then it's getting a little louder. Yeah, pretty cool. First thing on our master fader, CLA mix down. Got a little treble, we got glue, which is compression. Smoothing things out with our virtual tape machine. 1.5 ips, input output like about this. Right here, if there's one plugin that you need to get Get this, this is the Waves SSL Bus Compressor. It is the glue that holds everything together. You've got all these instruments here. There's your drums, bass, guitar, acoustic, vocal, but we want them to all blend well together. This is gonna put them together. It's gonna accomplish that. I basically just did uh, a Gil Norton SSL Master Fader Bus Compressor. I did my own little tweaks on that. And here's our limiter. Just did a server for tech, and I actually pulled that down to three. And then right here at 3.3, we're not letting anything hit that threshold beyond three dB. So once it gets down here to this area, audio is getting past that. That's our threshold. It's getting stuck right there at that mark. And then on the end here, I've got my stereo width, got that bypass. So the stereo width right here, everything is nice and rounded. And then once you have it like that, it's mono. So try using this on your master fader. It'll really help you zone in and uh, get your mixes sitting well and right. So let's listen to this from beginning to end. I'm gonna drink some of my Colombian coffee and I'll give you some critiques along the way. Here we go. That kick drum is nice and rounded, it's punchy. Lama, five figure thousand there, miss the middle class by just a hair. Got a checking account that I check into without enough Levels are good. to get me through. When the 
mobile. No harsh frequencies of these acoustic guitars. I'll see spread out. To get rid of my job. Old Jimbo don't know what he's gonna do. Well, I'm a Bass guitar, nice and checking the that I Sitting in there, it's not overpowering. Now let's try something here. We're gonna take our volume go all the way down. See, we're only at like four on our volume. When you get to this point, you want to make sure three things, maybe four in the element, your kick, snare, and your vocal. Everything's good. I feel like maybe the bass could come up just a little bit. Checking account that I check into without enough zeros to get me through and the mortgage is late and the cable shut off. Boss is itching to get rid of my job. Old Jimbo don't know what he's gonna do. You're gonna be alright, bro. But tonight we drink to this gone. Bitch, you're gonna grab that ass, hit the dance floor real fast. Get the band of space and trying to cash. Get your girl, grab that ass, hit the dance floor. Real Overhead is spread. Get your simple place and trying to cash. You can hear the symbols, but they're clean, not overpowering. Don't hurt ears. Snare sounds nice and crisp. The high end and the mid range. Get your girl, grab that ass, hit the dance floor real fast. A virtual Tentatina on the Master Plus. No clipping. Sitting nicely, good relationship here. Beautiful. So, one last thing I just added a fade to all of these here at the end so that way it just faded out and that is how we mix that american country a little bit of rock and roll song for your listening pleasure all right i always want to thank you so much for watching you guys really make me happy and proud and i'm glad that i can do this for you if you liked anything thumbs up sure would be appreciated in the comments if you have questions remember tomorrow I might have a video. Oh, let me show you something. Ah, shit. <laughs> Look at this. This is a brand new piece of gear that I got for the studio. But uh, you'll just have to wait for tomorrow when I get that out of the box and set up. But if you have any guesses on what it might be, let me know in those comments. All right, guys, again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Paul, the fifth of Legacy Studios Nash. I'm out.